Prepare your ears for episode 32 of the Penthouse Basements podcast. Get those suckers ready for a number of crazy topics, including some amazing electrocution stories. We begin to cast the Penthouse Basements movie. I discuss Pennsylvania favorite dish, chicken corn soup. And we recount the insanity of our last Highwood Theater show. Also, pour one out for the final segment ever of Google Feud. It's episode 32 of the Penthouse Basements Podcast, and it starts right now. ate a whole pig during a podcast. Anyway, <laughs> episode 32 of the Penthouse Basements podcast. How is everybody tonight? We're good. We're good. And we're right. <laughs> uh, I am your fearless host, David Lamson. I'm here with... Dave Johnston. Pete Penocci. Zazie Morgan. And we are here to come into your home. Into your ear home. And make ourselves at home. Into your brain holes. <laughs> Uh, Think of us like earbuds for you. <laughs> yeah, earbuds for your ear. Do you mind if we cradle into this little nook in your ear? <laughs> Just try to enjoy that picture for a moment. <laughs> I call cochlea nude. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, first, let me say there are several ways to get in touch with the penthouse basements. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on the street. <laughs> Don't do that. Come to Dave's house. <laughs> the address do is... <laughs> don't, don't do that either. Uh, Twitter address is improv underscore PB. Uh, yes. It used to be PB underscore improv, but we do, lost the password. Does, does, who's managing that? Who's? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm oh, managing okay. it. I mean, it's mostly just Simpsons quotes. Oh, but, okay. uh, yeah. Um, you can also... Find us on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com, search for the Penthouse Basements. We have, I think we have like 133 likes. Like, yeah. we're, that old blues oh, man, we're well past oh, him yeah. now. We're looking yeah. at the rear view yeah. mirror. Do we, have an, do we have an Instagram? <laughs> nah. I'm going to set up an Instagram for nah. Nobody <laughs> wants to see us. <laughs> All the kids are on Instagram. You, yeah, you, you run point on that, Pete. No, I don't run porn on that. No, no, you run point on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll run point. Not point. <laughs> I could have sworn you said, you of... run porn on that. You got porn on the brain, Pete. It's okay. <laughs> this Freudian slip is brought to you by Pete Pinocchio. Speaking of porn, what about Snapchat? Do you guys, do you Snapchat? Is it a thing? Yeah. I mean, I mean, once again, I think it's like a younger type of. It's a thing for the young people. Okay. Under I'm 30? Still, I'm under technically 30. A, a millennial, and if I am, you definitely are. Because I think isn't Snapchat the same as the what's, what's, what's app? Yeah, where basically the, it's for like, I think Snapchat is for like uh, D-pics because they, they disappear, right? So, yes. Pictures, pictures of the letter D for yeah. small children? Yes. Yep. Generally, <laughs> Snapchat uh, is for photos and videos that uh, disappear as soon as you watch them or okay. look at them. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have a certain number of seconds, but there's ways around that. There, Nothing mean? is safe. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Just, everything is because it has to exist in a cloud service somewhere at some point, right? I don't know. I think I think Snapchat has told um, like the authorities that no, it like deletes from our servers as soon as it deletes from your app. Oh. Your, your I, digital imprint is always out there, man. It's yeah. always following you. Well, it, or you could just do a screenshot. Uh, whatever somebody sent you, which... <laughs> but then Snapchat will alert that person that you took a screenshot, and they'll never send you anything again. Is that true? So you're a Snapchatter, it sounds like. Well, I've looked into it, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, although apparently there are or were um, apps that can get around that notification, bottom line is, don't send anything to anybody you don't trust, or that right. you don't want out in the. Have, Thanks, have, have a contract. Game. Yeah, <laughs> have a contract with everyone you communicate with at all times. Yes, wow. 
I don't uh, think I've ever sent a, a D pick via phone. I have. I think wait. I've sent it. <laughs> wait. I've sent it wait. through uh, Yahoo Messenger, though. Okay. Through Polaroid. I thought, that's what I thought he was going to say. Snail <laughs> mail? Nailed it. Uh, It'll be there in three to five business days, baby. I, I still so hard. The only DP I've ever sent is. No, wait. <laughs> that's you the mean wrong dick pick. What's DP? <laughs> So it's when a man <laughs> when and another men. man and a woman get together. Oh, double penetration? <laughs> hey, this is a family <laughs> show. That's right. Well, anyways, back to dick pics. Um, I once, I got a picture somebody sent me that I thought was so hilarious because mm-hmm. it looks like the guy thinks his thumb is broken and it's super swollen, but then when you look closely, he's really just holding a penis <laughs> and it's not his thumb. Wow. So I sent it to my roommate and said that I needed to come home immediately because I'd slam my thumb in the door. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> Briefly. I told him before he actually left his girlfriend's house to come home and get me. But yeah, quickly. I had a moment. It was pretty great. Okay, so no Snapchat. No Instagram. We will have answer. I'm You're going to run point yeah. on that? Run point on that <laughs> It really sounds like you're saying porn every Not time Not even say. close. But, um, okay, YouTube. You can search for the penthouse mm-hmm. basements. What about are you porn? <laughs> Pornhub. Do we have anything? Uh, we're, we're an ex-hamster group here, all right? Anyway, um, and that's about it. You know, if you haven't already turned off the podcast in disgust, please come to those sites to check us out. Furiously taking notes on all the ways they can get in contact with Furiously us. Furiously doing something. Hey! Oh. Um, and crying, probably, as I'm oh. doing it. Uh, okay, time for best podcast segment of all time. What's up, yo? Pete. What's up, yo? Um, so last night, so in addition to everything else I do, I have a, uh, a hip-hop project that's just myself that I occasionally like go out and do open mics. So I did one last night. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, like I think, one of the best ones I probably did. I did it on the campus of the University of Maryland at this like hip-like uh, coffee place. Nice. And it went really good. I did like everything I kind of wanted. You know, it was like a little bit stand up, it was like a little bit improv, uh, you know, the hip hop and everything. And it was kind of funny because I couldn't get my player to work. So I had to do the intro, stop it, and start it like four different times. So I had to like make up like, you know, a new segment for like each time I had to stop and, uh, and start the, the first song that I did. Did you film it? No, no, oh, I should have. Because I really didn't know like what the, you know, reaction was going to be but they they were really digging it it was really you know like i keep forgetting every time i do it like i've done this like a thousand times and i've like practiced it so much that it's i can just like kind of go on like autopilot and like improv improv some stuff and like change some stuff as it's like going along and stuff can you hip-hop a little bit for us right now uh i can do some of the one of the raps of the first one i did yeah okay we'd love to hear it's called atari 2600 Wow. You made hip hop on cool <laughs> already. Nerdcore. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's kind of like nerdcore. Uh, thinking about time that I used to spend playing combat in Yard's Revenge. Going out, man, see you later. Got a date with the space invaders. Because to me, ain't a damn thing greater on a vine over alligators. Woo! Pitfall. Ah, yeah. The pitfall reference. <laughs> nice. That's All great. the kids are going to get yeah, that. That's right. <laughs> so, but that was my whole thing. I kind of presented it as like, you kids don't know shit. You millennials don't know nothing. I'm like from the 80s. I'm like, we had to suffer with dot matrix printers and like phones we couldn't take anywhere. You kids like got it easy. So I was kind of like the grumpy. I came off as like the grumpy, like old man from the 80s. We had to send our DPs through yeah. Polaroid. <laughs> <laughs> We had our porn on VCR tapes. Come on. <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, we had an Atari growing up. My, my parents were divorced, so... Uh, I'm my, so sorry. That's, that's not the point of the story. <laughs> the point of the story is my mother... At my mother's house, we had the Atari, but my dad, he wanted to butter me up, so we had the Nintendo ah, at his place. Oh. But I remember the Atari... I became so bitter with the Atari because like, all we had was like... The crappy Pac-Man port. Oh, yeah. And the MASH Atari game, which was just wow. like... It wasn't even like surgery or anything. It was just like carrying wounded around and bringing it back to the camp. Oh. It sucked so much. Sucked more than the E.T. game? 
I, I it might be worse than the wow. AT game. It might be worse, but nobody ever talks about it because I bet no one knew that a MASH Atari game existed. There's a hot new IP that the kids will love. Mm-hmm. The Suicide is Painless is the theme song. <laughs> and it'll be great for the kids, MASH. So did, uh, did Dad end up winning your love? Winning your and winning, love. yes. Because yes. Yes. <laughs> then I got the Super Nintendo from him and oh. you know, Zelda and... You know, yeah, he knew he knew where to he knew where to get. He knew where to butter your bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Know. I don't mean to make you jealous, but I had the power glove. Oh, oh it's so bad. Oh, man. So how? What did you learn how to use the power glove? Were you, did you become a power glove master? Well, to clarify, my brother got the power glove, and yeah. sometimes he let me use it, mm-hmm. but. I actually could do it pretty well with Duck Hunt. You actually made it like a gun and did the thing, oh, so that was nice. That's cool. But otherwise, it was really just mostly a controller and the wrist. Yeah. I remember. So I would like to take some credit for Pete's hip hop, mm-hmm. <laughs> considering that I gave him an old Atari yeah. that had belonged to my uncle. That and electrocuted me and nearly died from. <laughs> Is this true? Yes. We got a beef going there? Yeah, but well, that, that, that's, that gangsta. comes later in the story. I'd also say it makes a gangsta. Okay, yeah, you nearly died making this Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. Um, so my uncle, my uncle abandoned this system years and years ago. It was haunted. And it was just sort of <laughs> sitting in my mom's uh, garage or somebody's garage. And I finally, I went to take it back to D.C., uh, unfortunately, I brought it back in my luggage with a gifted uh, glass jar of delicious Vermont maple, maple syrup. syrup. <laughs> and inside of two separate Ziploc bags, and it was in my checked bag, and it just shattered somewhere along the journey. I, I got my bag at bag check, and it was like maple syrup dripping out of it as I rolled it across <laughs> toward the bathroom and opened it up to see, oh God, what the damage was. All the bears that were following you around in the airport, man. The bears were ridiculous. <laughs> bears are honey, that's moose. <laughs> Shit! Uh, so after like having this uh, crystallized maple syrup covered old Atari system sitting uh, in my house for years, I finally gave it to Pete. Um, on the condition that he uh, take care of it and bring it back to or life. Or if I sold it, you get, would you say, 20%? Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I said 50, 80, 90%. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Not a real number. <laughs> uh, so you did restore it. I spent like three days getting it cleaned up. And it worked perfectly fine for two, for, uh, well, not all the games worked. I think I got uh, Missile Command to work, which I was the most excited about. And so I got a couple games to work. I got to even get the trackball like to work. Mm-hmm. And so I spent like a few days like reading like things on YouTube. They were like, "Yeah, the major issue with this thing is like the adapt because it has a real funky adapter in the back that so you, you have one to, with like, the switch or no? It's weird, like because you have to like plug in. It's like you have to plug in like two separate things. So they were like, "Oh, there's like an issue with like people getting electrocuted." I'm like, "Oh, okay, whatever." <laughs> so like the second day, I like plugged it in. I literally got like a. <laughs> I really thought I was going to pass out and die. And since then, I haven't uh, messed with it. <laughs> Electrocution is no joke. I've been electrocuted no. But the day I got at work, and my friend came we'll over, he's, he's like, <laughs> it smells like pancakes in here. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably because of the maple syrup in the... Uh... <laughs> and because of your fried internal yeah, organs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it smells like pancakes and bacon. I had some batter in my pocket when I got electrocuted, and now it's a fully... Oh, and pancake. also what I had to do, the you know, the joysticks... There was an issue with those, so I saw like a YouTube video where you go in, take it apart, take a pencil eraser, and like uh, erase like some of the things like on the pad to create like a better connection. So once I did that, the uh, controller started working. Nice. Tell the truth, did either of you lick the Atari? <laughs> lick it? Because of the maple syrup. Oh, oh yeah. I did. It no, no, it, it has nothing really to do with the maple syrup. She just wants to know if you have a creepy fetish. That's well, one of my electric. <laughs> Being electrocuted involved licking a power up. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we used to lick batteries to see if they were still charged, and you would get like a little, like, if they if they were. This is Never something your parents approved of? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, this is before no one had a battery tester. So we're like, is this battery good? I don't know. No wonder life expectancies you know, yeah. were so small. In the 80s. Wow. You had well, to do like weird stuff 80, yeah. just to like check to see if a battery was charged. You know, you know what I used as a battery uh, tester was any electrical device. Right, ever. put it in. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. We no, want, we want no, better liquid. I think it was almost like a uh, torture type, getting yourself zapped type of thing that went beyond like even like testing like the battery was this frog alive oh i better yeah. lick it yeah it's still alive <laughs> i totally looked like you found a frog on dave's table randomly no, i'm really i was really selling that scene listeners you can't you can't see but i that is i felt frog. like i had a frog in my hand and i fooled zazi for your consideration <laughs> oscar voters <laughs> so zazi how many days ago did you lick that power outlet <laughs> Um, probably like, hold on. I just assume it was a few days ago because she's seeing frogs. Her memory <laughs> all factors no, are all it's like, fried. it was probably like six, eight thousand days ago. Ooh. All right. It was probably no. potato. You were a small Zazie. Yes. And what happened? Uh, my brother, we had, uh, my parents got this real fancy GMC truck van for all the mm, kitties right around nice. and it. It was like one of the first to come with a TV built in that we could Ooh, put our, wow. TV, that yeah. we put our N- Nintendo in. And one of the cords was hanging out from Nintendo and my brother. With saying elsewhere, the game. like, lick it, do it, look at it, you could have my dessert, I don't know what. And I licked it and a big blue spark went flying out of my mouth. <laughs> Don't lick a live cord. Wow. <laughs> what cord could that have been? I don't know. It was something coming. I mean, the car was on and it was coming out of like, it was like a hookup to one of the entertainment pieces. Hmm. Okay. So what about the second electrocution? Second? She went back for another one. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> well, no, they put maple syrup on the cord. Oh, so. nice. uh, no, the second one was actually I pretty it was legit. a French toast stick. I, we were hosting my friend's band. Who included Thomas Morton, who now has a t- his own TV show on Vice. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I know, whatever. He played in my parents' backyard at a concert that we put together. <laughs> um, but uh, you step in any dog shit back there. Well, it got rained out, so mm, we just tried to try to move it into the house. Yeah. And we were taking all the extension cords in, and I done a really good job of unplugging everything to bring anything in, and then pulling the extension cords, but somebody who was setting up inside replugged in one of the extension cords as I was picking it up out of a puddle of water. Oh. And my arms actually literally you can't see me, but I'm also doing a really good acting job. Just yeah. picture her shaking a baby. Yes. <laughs> May the record reflect. <laughs> Zazie is doing that dance from Taylor Swift's song. <laughs> Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> that's that's the one. Yep. No, it's the one where so. you did something, and I'm not telling you what it is. <laughs> those are those are the two times. I'm bad wow. music. You're always good for weird stories, Ozzy. I like having you on this podcast. Thanks. I talk a lot. All right, so great rapping, Pete. Thank when, you. When are you doing something like that next? Um, I don't know. I'm trying. Oh, actually, probably Magfest. Mm. I might just set up a Magfest and uh. Especially the Atari 2600 song. Are you going to have a booth or something? Uh, they actually have like an open like music performance. I don't know if you've probably seen them. They have them like taped off like along the wall. Yeah. There's like little spaces that they have. But I also might, they actually have like a jam room that I might also try to do that in also. We'll come support you, Pete. Cool. Manifest cool. is always cool. All righty. Great stuff, Pete. Dave, what's up, yo? So I recently read a book, uh, called, I believe it's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm self-censored. <laughs> and it talks about not exactly how you should stop uh, giving a fuck, but how... <laughs> that there he goes, very well, designated day. <laughs> <laughs> but how you should selectively choose what to give a flying F about. Mm. The problem is that everybody takes too many things too seriously. That, you know, people, especially online, they're like horribly offended by every little thing. And people are choosing to get, you know, personally outraged by the yeah. smallest things here and there. Can you believe that they recast... Hellboy? Unbelievable. <laughs> That's bullshit. 
Yeah, Ron <laughs> Perlman. Is he was great. Great. Now it's going to be the uh, sheriff from Stranger Things. I they don't need to redo it. Mm. Was the sheriff from Stranger Things also the guy who was the roach in Men in Black? No. The roach in it. Men in Black was uh, uh, was Vincent, Vincent D'Onofrio from yeah. Law and Order's uh, uh, Criminal, Criminal Intent. Intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the serial killer was Kevin Bacon. No. <laughs> Tune in next for our Din- Vincent D'Onofrio podcast. It's coming at you. He did a great job with that movie. But I guess because, you know, we're no longer spending our time, like, struggling to survive. We find <laughs> We new... don't have to lick batteries anymore. Right. <laughs> Some struggling more than others. We, we find petty little things to, to give a crap about. Um, and that's not the way that you should go to, to live a happy life. Yeah. You should selectively, you know, care what you give about, you know, make some, some sensible values. Well, I mean, so did they say what you should care about? Well, they can't tell you exactly what to care about, but the, you know, there's obvious things like family and health and happiness. Um, but it's really up to your choice. You can only, you know, put in attention and effort for so many things or, or in such intensity that think carefully <clears throat> before, you know, taking to heart, you know, feeling like uh, you, you're offended or this is really important to me. Ask yourself, why is it really important to me? And if you cannot, you know, defend it to uh, challenge, then, then why is that something that you value so highly? So I read today that uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, his grandson, I think, stepped down from as the president of Tolkien Enterprises or whatever, mm-hmm. which means that now Warner Brothers is basically going to have like complete control to license, you know, Lord of the Rings. And then they'll probably they put want. out like the Tolkien yeah. fan to be yeah, or like Lord of the Rings babies coming soon. Mm. Not right, really you know? the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Was that why they're about to release a new TV series? Yeah, basically. But I shouldn't get angry about that. Right. I mean, there are some um, worlds, you know, fantasy worlds, that you can make additional uh, movies and TV shows and things about. Like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a rich realm, but you don't have people who are like, it wasn't in the book. Yeah. Um, if they try to do that with Harry Potter and just like create a Harry Potter movie without... Uh, J.K. Rowling, nobody would go to see it. People would be up in arms. So I don't know how well the Tolkien thing is going to, the Lord of the Rings thing is going to work out without any source material. Although maybe there is source material because he had a ton of appendices. Well, Warner, well, I mean, some of those had to be removed for his health. But um, what what I'm going to say right now is, uh, go on. No, no, you go. I just had a follow-up question to your, what's up, you? Yes. Did you feel like you learned from that book? And will apply anything that you read. No. Are you happy? <laughs> are you are you happier because of it? I can't believe the new Zelda game had a season pass. <laughs> no, I did. I feel like I need to read it again because um, I have the world's worst memory. Uh, but but some a lot of the things really um, struck home with me. Yeah. And so now I am trying to 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 give less of a crap about the petty things. I'm a big my fa- one of my favorite Serenity quotes because I am really good at making myself worried about things that I can't control is worrying about tomorrow's problems only takes away today's peace. Oh, Isn't that nice? That is a nice one. of my yeah. affirmations. Um, well, the affirmations with Stuart I have Smalley. Second follow-up <laughs> question. Answer if you're comfortable. Do you think Tony Robbins would approve of this methodology? Uh, I, you know, I think that he would, uh, because he, he is completely open about how he takes ideas from the smartest people in the world and he makes them his own. It's not a bad, mm. bad way to do it. No. Sort uh, of how you should do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, you take, take ideas from the greatest people in the world and share them with everyone. Remember? Like cool. our old president who said, I don't know everything about everything, so I'm just going to try to bring in people who do to teach me. That was a smart way to move country. That Richard Nixon, he was something. 
<laughs> battle presidents. I was just uh, Harun. Uh, okay, great stuff, Dave. Uh, what's the name of the book? Uh, the subtle art of not giving a. Fuck. Does it talk about like? I guess I interact with a lot of people who like. Not that I disagree with everything they talk about or stand for, but, but um, fuck them. No, I mean it's like <laughs> totally. I, mean, I have like a lot of, I guess, friends and associates that are like really, really religious. I mean, not just like believing in God, but believing in the Bible and believing in Christ, and who constantly say like, you ask them a question, they'll be like, oh, it's in. God's hands and everything. You're, and I'm an uh, agnostic Jew, so. <laughs> Pete, Pete, you're not, they're not your real friends. You're like the white whale to them. <laughs> they're just trying to save you. Literally and the white whale. Whichever, <laughs> whichever one of them saves you, then they get like the biggest pot in heaven. But I don't know how to deal with like when, you know, they're talking about something and it's like they naturally assume that everyone's a Christian and everyone like should think like this. Mm hmm. You are the. Does, like, does that book like talk about that? Like dealing not, with people with. I, no, I don't like... think it talks too much about people with uh, strongly held religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure what scenarios you're coming up with where, where people are, are doing that. And every, of, anything. Like, oh man, they, that, that. Oh, that school shooting. I was like, oh, that person was blessed because they didn't get killed. I'm like, what about the other 20 people that got killed? Or like they not my less, boss's like, husband who uh, told me that Hurricane Katrina happened because of the gay agenda. Yeah, yeah. And that's the other thing that kind of long that goes with the whole religious thing is them being really homophobic also. So that's yeah. kind of like, and their justification for being homophobic is that they're religious. So like. Or where I grew up in our valedictorian couldn't stand on the stage for graduation because she was Jewish. Wow. And, wow. Mm. Also, mm -hmm. in that same area, because it was the biggest building in our town, Johnson's Ferry Baptist Church, but what? Um, uh, I smoked pot for the first time in the basement, and then went to go leave, and on any exit they have, it says, welcome to the mission field. Like, you know, you're leaving this area, so now you have to convert everybody else, <laughs> and I flipped out. Just give them some of those cool little uh, religious comic books, the chick tracks. Oh. That'll, that'll convert people. <laughs> Meanwhile, my brother was an openly practicing Wiccan. Mm. It didn't go well. I did not have many friends for a long time. So I think in your case, Pete, um, if you highly value, um, like, defending the the rights of gay people uh, that's something that you can consciously stand up for uh -huh. or do you also value um having a peaceful relationship with your co exactly. that's, that's the that's the uh the balance of of that it's because i don't mm -hmm. want to be like oh well you're like saying my views are messed up am i basically saying the same things that your views are messed up because you you know believe what you want what you want to believe or what you choose to believe yeah, I can't tell you which value you need to hold in greater value. Mm. Who is the author of this book so that we can write him about this loophole? <laughs> uh, Mark something, I think. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, great. What's up, yo? For me, uh, just quickly, um, ESPN 30 for 30. Uh, oh, yeah. The Randy Savage one? I didn't know Not that they're Randy doing Savage. a Randy Savage one, but they did a Ric Flair Ric one. Ric Flair. Why did I say Randy Savage? Ric Flair. That's what I meant. <laughs> they did a uh, ESPN 30 for yep. 30, did a Ric Flair it was, I think, documentary. Their best 30 for 30 you've ever seen? Um, The one about the Red Sox winning was pretty good. And hmm. the one that they did about... Um, Steve Bartman was also the, oh, yeah. the Cubs guy. So one of the best, though. You can yeah, one yeah. of the best. But it's so. What is this? So growing up, he no, he wants to know what thirty for thirty is, right? Yeah. Oh, thirty for <laughs> it's just uh, ESPN. They produced a bunch of documentaries, and they're called Thirty for Thirty, just random sports documentaries. Thirty documentaries for ESPN's thirtieth anniversary. Well, I think they were originally supposed to be that, but they've just continued. That's the question. Are they thirty minutes long? No. Nah. Okay, no, I thought so. they're not thirty minutes long. I, they were originally supposed to be thirty, thirty, like thirty, 30 of them, but 30 they were so so popular. Yeah, that they just 
didn't change the name. <laughs> they just keep going. There's like well more than 30 of them. Oh, um, the, there's another really good one about uh, the day of the white Bronco chase. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, there's no interviews. It's just like interspliced footage from TV of the white Bronco chase. It was game five of the NBA Finals. Uh, the Rangers were having their Stanley Cup parade. Jack Nicholas's final. All on the same day? Yeah. Wow. All that happened in the same day. Ken Griffey Jr. hit his 500th home run, uh-huh. 400th home run. And all of these things happened. Oh, and the U.S. was hosting the World Cup. Wow. So all of these things were happening on the same day. That is the only day in the history of news <laughs> that justifies three 24-hour <laughs> news networks. <laughs> well, uh, I'm... Question, Zazi. Have there been more 30 for 30s than podca- Penthouse Basement podcasts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, there's probably only been been... Six, it's probably been 60 of them by now. Yeah. But these yeah. are more complicated to produce than any other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have bigger budgets. So. The editing takes millions of dollars. Also, man. another good one was the one, um, which I didn't know this was a true story. The guy in the Goodfellas movie actually was involved with fixing some college basketball games at Boston Wait, College. Wait, which guy? There were a lot of... Uh, the Goodfellas. main guy in Goodfellas. Oh, um, Ray, Jimmy Ray something? Liotta? Yeah, Ray Liotta's character. Oh, yeah, yeah, was yeah. Actually, which they didn't really talk about in Goodfellas at all. No. But he was actually involved with, like, fixing these basketball games. So that 30 for 30 was really, really, really good. And they talked about, you know, uh, how everything, like, came to light when everyone got caught. Well, even if you're not a wrestling fan or sports fan, if you're a compelling story and documentary fan, seek out 30 for 30. Um, The one that I'm referencing that just came out with is called Nature Boy. It's about Nature Boy Ric Flair, the pro wrestler. Um, Growing up uh, in the 80s, I mean, when you're a little kid, I think that's like the formative years when you become uh, a fan of wrestling. I don't know who at this table was a big wrestling fan when they were younger or still are. Are you still at all? No. I'm not either, Pete. I was Matt Um, made for the wrestling team. (laughs) <laughs> nice. Um, but, um, yeah, and then you grow out of it. But, like, I think one of the things when you're younger, what draws you to it is, like, it's like superheroes fighting, and it's real. Mm-hmm. All these guys are beating the hell out of each other, and yeah. these are real things that are happening. And wrestling isn't exactly fake, but it's scripted. It's choreographed. Yeah, choreographed. choreographed and scripted. It's a dance. It's yeah. like, a, it's like a, uh, a soap opera for men, basically. I mean, that, that is one way I heard it described. And in Glow. Is exactly uh, Glow, right. yeah, that's right, in Glow, which is another exactly. wrestling-related thing you should watch yes. if you're not necessarily a wrestling fan. Based but, on um, our sponsorship deal with Netflix, we have to mention Glow in every podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just quickly, because I've gone on too long about things other than the thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, that wasn't the thing? <laughs> no, no, it's the Nature Boy documentary, uh, and it's it's really good. The wrestling parts are really good, but uh, Ric Flair, uh, ri- his real name is like Richard Flair. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, it, it like simultaneously paints the wrestler Ric Flair as one of the greatest ever. And Richard Flair, the man, as like a horrible husband, horrible father. And it like does a really good job of simultaneously presenting these two people that are trapped within one body. And it does a really good job of doing that. Um, I would highly recommend it. Even if you're not a wrestling fan or a sports fan, it's, it's pretty compelling. Has anybody gotten... Like successful and happy in their future from pro wrestling, other than The Rock, because it seems like everybody else has had issues. Some people have had premature deaths. A lot of people, yeah, died. Jesse Linda Ventura. McMahon. He's a crazy nutball. Yeah, but he also got to be a governor. Yeah, that's true. I mean that was that's well after pro wrestling. But yeah, though. they have a crazy statistic about the the percentage of people that are dead from like WrestleMania three. Yeah, and most of them wind up dying from heart attacks and a lot of times they're driving a car or whatever and they have like a heart attack i mean probably from like steroids and cocaine use or like drinking like eddie guerrero when he passed away he had been like clean for months and then just like died of a heart attack yeah he he was still wrestling yeah um but yeah it's depressing but it's good story and you know check it out espn 30 for 30 nature boy yeah and his Um, son his son was a wrestler and his son killed himself because he kind of got like in that cycle of uh, 
uh, painkillers and like the adrenaline of like wrestling. And, yeah, like, R- Rick Flair. Rick Flair's son. Yeah. Uh, what's his? I, Reed, I yeah. think, is his name. Reed Fleer. Reed, Reed Fleer. Fleer. Yeah. But and he, his daughter still wrestles though. Charlotte. Yes. She's like the champion. Yeah. They interview her. Yeah. It's very. That was good. That was kind of like the best. The best thing to see. I'm glad they kind of saved that towards the end because you kind of felt like. We need something uplifting, so seeing his daughter. Was- well, they interview his surviving son once, and he has like one of the like, he is he does not speak li- uh, like lovingly of his father. He's no. like, I never saw him, mm-hmm. and you know, like you know, he was a womanizer. And they talk to his first wife and his current wife. I don't know if he had one in between there, but. Um, and asked him how many women do you think he slept with? What did he say? Was it- he said a thousand. No, he said thousand. Did I think he, he said ten thousand. Ten thousand, yeah. yeah, which is bullshit. No, but that's I don't right. Know. You think three hundred and sixty five days a year, <laughs> twenty years. So that's at least, I guess, twenty years. Yeah. Because he wrestled since like the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Who's gonna count? Hey, somebody asked me how many women I've slept with. I'm also going to say 10,000. <laughs> Up top. That's, that's probably. Yes, that's might be a, it might be a smaller number than 10,000, though. Well, <laughs> good luck finding all these women. They're still recovering. I had my best friend from high school in town last weekend, and I made her look at my diary of my list that I keep. Of all the people you slept t- with? I will not tell you how long it is. Yeah. Or I, I keep a, I keep a list too, and I, I write it down just to remind myself. Like the older I get, the more it's like, dude from bar. <laughs> yeah, I forget Kevin? the name. Like, yeah, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> sort of. All righty, thirty for thirty. Nature boy, check it out. Zazi, what's up, yo? Um. Well, I have a life gave me lemons and then turned it to lemonade story. Uh, I. Lost my life. So some people know that part of my charm is that I'm a little scatterbrained. I tend to forget <laughs> and lose things often, mm. like my virginity. Um, <laughs> hence the diary. Yeah, hence the diary. Kevin? Uh, <laughs> Question mark? Camping trip guy? Um, <laughs> this was just an REI employee. <laughs> and by camping, I mean REI bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding, Mom. <laughs> um, oh god she listens to oh, this yeah, oh, totally. Jesus Christ <laughs> totally. um, so she's one of our downloads uh, where was it going oh but I left my driver's license in Idaho which is always hard because <laughs> I'm not and so I had to get a Virginia license and I was all grumpy about it and I really didn't want to because yeah. I like the DC license better and I just like saying I'm from DC even though I live in Virginia but I'll be back in DC soon but up anywho I was all annoyed and then recently I was like holy shit I have a DC or I have a Virginia license and I got to vote for our Democratic governor who just got elected. Wow. Oh, you have to have a Virginia driver's license for that? So, well, you have to be a Virginia resident and have an ID card of some sort. It'd be a registered Virginia voter. Oh, okay. I don't think you can vote with a DC license. Well, no, probably not because you would be living in DC. Well, I just but never changed it. Though. Sometimes they can take like a utility bill or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, they definitely made, it was a weird, it was, I never had a voting thing like that before. It was a strange process where you actually hand write the ballot and then they like Xerox it and then they don't tell you if they read it right. It made me nervous, but hmm. wow. it all worked out and, uh, or, like maybe, or maybe not. Sounds like voter yeah. fraud to me. Well, you gotta, you gotta get Trump involved with this. Northam, Northam <laughs> is there. <laughs> nice. And I am happy. Yeah, that is good. I, I listen to a sports talk radio show during work and um, just to have something on and like the Ed Gillespie political ads. This is like they're just they were just like the weirdest bullshit ever. Like MS-13 has rapists and murders oh, yeah, yeah. on your streets. And it's like, can you do that? Like that, it's, that's like hate mongering personified. Well, it is true. Virginia uh, has one of the worst MS-13, pro- Fairfax County specifically has had. More sex trafficking. And yeah, but you can't cases. put that all on the 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 Democratic governor. You can't put that well, on him. Clearly, if you pay attention to the sex train run out of Comet Pizza, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. That's not true. That is true. 
Well, you're going to have to edit that part out. <laughs> it might be. It's not. It's an untrue statement. There's lots of evidence against it. And um, we're back! But I, uh, wait. But it was funny with that because I actually signed up to do some canvassing for the election. And all of a sudden, like, I was like, oh, and I can vote. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was going to get other people. I forgot that I could. But I did. Nice. And it's probably thanks to me that he won. Yep. He won by one vote, didn't he? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. 62 percent there's only <laughs> one <laughs> uncounted provisional ballot <laughs> yeah. all right great stuff doing your civic duties ozzy thank you okay what's up yo in the books now it's time for a penthouse basements update so just had a show two shows two shows and a movie and a movie, yes. Penthouse Basement's the movie starring Channing Tatum as me. <laughs> as uh, you, as really? Me, yes. I forgot oh, he played Dave. Who's everybody else? Okay, yeah. Who's going to play Zazie? Uh, so I have been Emma told. Meryl Streep. Emma Stone. I, I have actually no. been told several times if I if my Weight Watchers finds out that I have a striking resemblance to Maya Rudolph. Oh, I see that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My yeah. Rudolph. There I feel good go. about it. Sure. Dan Aykroyd for Pete. Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Not Matthew Broderick. I used I, to get Matthew Broderick. I mean, but he's yeah, a drunk so. driving murderer. That's no true. one wants yeah. to be. No one wants him associated. We won't have him. I also got Harry movie. Connick Jr. a couple times. Also, I paid what, it. you look like him, or you got him a couple <laughs> yeah. times? Yeah, I smuggled him into the back of the van. <laughs> I painted a picture of Dan Aykroyd once. Oh, I'll give wow. it to you and for sale. Okay. For you. Yeah. I had uh, Harry Connick Jr. a couple times in an REI bathroom. <laughs> I wrote a song about it. <laughs> Won a Grammy. <laughs> Okay, so Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, are you are you good with that, Peter? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking Harry Connick Jr. Okay, we'll do it. I like we'll, that. Or yeah. Tim Curry. I've well, been told Tim Curry. Also. Well, he's in a wheelchair now, Is so he really? it will be perfect. No, no, no. Yeah, he he doesn't look good. Oh, he doesn't look good. Oh. I think he had a stroke or something. Oh, huh. yeah. How we'll have um, Tim Curry now or Tim Curry nineteen eighty seven. It's Billy Madison. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, Harry hey, Connick Jr. Harry Connick Jr. for me. Dave. Uh, I've been told... Uh, to, uh, 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 who was the guy from Jill the 70s show? Oh, not... Topher not, Grace? Topher Grace, I've heard. Really? Uh, I've heard like a young Bob Saget. <laughs> I can see that. We'll get current Bob Saget in like CGI. Uh, <laughs> Let's say him younger. Benjamin Button. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, were you going to say what? Jake Gyllenhaal? I'll take that's that. What, I mean, that's yeah. what I thought you were okay, going to say. Sold. You, so not de-aging Bob Saget. You want Jake Gyllenhaal. I would prefer, yeah. Okay. We, so this cast. You could capture my energy and, and youthful exuberance. Dave will be played by Jake Gyllenhaal. Harry Connick Jr. will play Pete. Sazi will be played by Maya Rudolph, and Channing Tatum will play. Wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, we have to have him in this movie. Um, I think we, Zach Zach, Zach Galifianakis. He could be Jack. <laughs> yeah, you could be done Zach by Galifianakis. Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. <laughs> um, I w- I was gonna say Philip Seymour Hoffman. I think right that's off dead. the table. Yeah. I, no, in his current state, I think would play me well. <laughs> really, <laughs> capture your eyes. <laughs> um, or if we were gonna do a de aging thing, uh, maybe a young John Goodman. Oh, John Goodman. Yeah, yeah. he's very good. Or other dead celebrity, John Candy. Maybe. <laughs> this is big dead celebrities for me. He's been, been dead, dead for 20 John years. John, no, John Goodman, 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 Goodman is fine. Oh, okay. John Candy. John Candy is John dead. Candy is He's dead. been dead like 40 years. Yeah. R.I.P. John Candy. Okay. What about the rest of the members of the penthouse basements? I mean, they're not here. Uh, Fuck okay. Them. I mean, do you want to do the rest of the members of the penthouse basement? <laughs> kind of, but I feel like it's less helpful for them. Yeah, it is. This will be like a running thing, though. Yeah. Remember okay. this, listeners. Whoever's on the podcast or something. Too. Whoever's on the podcast will bring it yeah. up to them in I haven't, future installments. I haven't stopped trying to place each of you as celebrities. I don't think we've gotten any of them right yet. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the Channing Tatum one. I mean, come on. Okay, uh, so what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, show. Show. <laughs> so first show we're going to talk about is our monthly cavalcade at the Pinch, the first Tuesday of every month. Um... How did it go, do you think? I wasn't there. I think it went great. <laughs> did you watch the video? Uh, no. Pete had a quick turnaround on the uh-huh. video production. Good job, Pete. Thank you. Um, how do you think it went? I think it was great. I think it was one of our uh, one of our best ones. Mm-hmm. 
Zazie? I wasn't in it either, but... Were you? I thought I was. I, I, was. I came to the, like, the very... No, you were there. You were there. I was. We did the eyeball play. Oh, Remember? yeah. <laughs> it was so memorable, <laughs> right, this yeah, show. One of our best. <laughs> um, sorry about that. It's all right. It sucked, all right? We're lying to you. Every one of our shows is horrible. <laughs> that eyeball, especially the beginning opening, I felt pretty good about. Well, we did just post that video, so yeah. check it out on, I'll post it on Twitter, and it's on Facebook and YouTube. On the YouTube machine. I don't believe, I don't believe I may have, uh, except maybe for once or twice, have ever watched any of our videos, really? because I think improv is, except for who's lying to it anyway, improv is one of those things that has to like be in the moment. It has to be done live and, and viewed live. I just like watching it to see when people laugh. Well, not only that, I like watch, like it's the way that I like to critique myself. You know, like I like self critique because whenever any 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 of you jokers critique me, I'm like, shut the fuck up, assholes. <laughs> but um, I do self critiquing, and you know, I see what mm-hmm. I can do better at. No. So, did you watch the video? I did. And what's your critique of yourself? Nothing. I was perfect in every way. No, um, I mean. You know, we, I think that was our know. strongest start to finish. I think we've ever. Yeah, yeah. I think we were pretty consistent in that one. And the crowd, the crowd was, <clears throat> the crowd was with us from the start until the end. Yeah, yeah. Died over here like Marlon Brando, the Godfather. <laughs> uh, we also <laughs> shoveling last... popcorn in your mouth, Pete. <laughs> our practice last week, we said we had the best plot line ever, which was Harry Tubman's boyfriend. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one. A practice that no one will ever see. Uh, it might have crossed some lines. But, um, <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, so uh, that went well. You can come check us out uh, the first Tuesday of every month at the well, Pinch. at least next month. Oh, God. What what are you saying, Pete? We're going to have to re-up for... Uh, well, they better re-up us or we're going to un-down thing. them. Yeah, call call the Pinch, call the pinch and DC. tell them I Talk want to more penthouse basements. Yeah. <laughs> I want more penthouse basements, yes. Um, and they will accommodate you. They will know what you're talking about. They won't think you're crazy and hang up on you. Uh, so second show, Highwood Theater. Now this one, <laughs> this show, there's some uh, complications about it, but how do you think it went? Um, Having only witnessed our <laughs> part of the show, it was great. I think it went fantastic. Yeah, right. I think so too. Yeah. The audience was on board with uh, with everything that we were doing. Mm-hmm. I think we had a lot of laughs. We had solid um, uh, games. Yeah. And I was happy with the whole thing. I thought it was one of our best shows in a long time. So nobody heard a cell phone or anything <laughs> during our part. That was another thing. Pete, Pete left his cell phone. On stage during all the other acts, and it was going off. And uh, someone who I had in the audience was like, "Where is this cell phone noise coming from? Who in the crowd is it emanating from?" And Pete came up and grabbed it, and it was his damn phone. He sabotaged Sabotage. the other acts. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, I probably. I mean, I was hosting the whole thing too, so I should have probably realized. That when I was up there hosting, that my phone was going off. I think I knew it was going off the first time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I got to like, I'll, I'll get it when I come back and introduce the sec act. Yeah. But then the second act came on and I left the stage. I'm like, oh, well, my phone's still up there. Good. I mean, good job. You can spin it any way you want. But it, anything that makes us look good is fine. Am I the only person where you would, you would realize after no more than 10 seconds, it's like my phone is not in my pocket? <laughs> Does not everyone like um, check their phone? I kind of did it intentionally. No, That's I'm, what we're trying I'm to I'm kind of in a bad situation where my phone, where like I don't want to like constantly look at it, so I will literally put it somewhere. So it's kind of like out of my out of my reach. Too many D pics. <clears throat> yeah, I miss yeah. the I miss the red DPs. light. Of my <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a love hate relationship with my phone. So sometimes I'll put it like out of out of my reach just to. Uh, I think it's worth noting that. The Highwood likes you so much, Pete, that they asked you to be the host. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal. That's yeah. right. Little did they Way know. Way to fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Fuck it up. I'll just tell Matt, I'm like, I had no idea whose cell phone that was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll die with us. Like, I, yeah. I doubt any of the people in the crowd knew who, who did it. Um, but, okay, so first group, what were they called? 
The quitters? The quitters. One of them literally had to quit because they had a coffee fit. fit. Yeah. <laughs> they had to leave the stage. The New York Post was all over that headline. Yeah. Never came back. <laughs> they never came back. We don't know. They disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Well, she went to get some water and just stayed off. Some uh, weird old lady in the audience kept... A like, lovely old lady. But older she lady, you know. was interacting... <gasps> This is from my, much like the dog is interacting with my toe, uh-huh. uh, this old woman was, like, verbally interacting with the improvisers on stage, like, talking to them, like, not just, like, under her breath, like, full sentences, like, oh, this this is the part where we laugh, and oh, that's great, and somebody dropped the scarf, and she was like, I got your scarf, <laughs> like, and they're performing <laughs> up there. And at one point, Dad Joke, which is the second group that performed, they acknowledged her and they were like, oh, there's a lot of ambient noise happening uh, oh. in this area. And they got fed up with her. And that video will be on Highwood's theater site because they were the premium group. <laughs> so, so we can see that. We can watch wow. that. <laughs> and she got fed up with us. She did get fed up with us. And I got pissed at her because I was sitting in the corner, you know, like getting ready for the Nobody show. Nobody puts David in the corner. Except for myself. <laughs> and if there's a comfy chair. So I was sitting in the corner in a comfy chair, you know, getting ready for the show. And she comes out because you guys are being loud. She gives me the stink eye. And I'm like, listen, lady, <laughs> I'm not fucking talking. Where it's were not we standing? Me. Were we sitting on the couches? Uh, you guys were like around the corner, kind of. Oh, okay. But it's like she's like giving me the like third degrees. Like it's not me, lady. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't remember. Her. Was she there during our set? No, she hightailed it out. Oh, okay, that's why we didn't hear anything out of her. Yeah. Huh. And the stand-up comedian wasn't great. I thought she was fine. <laughs> Pete, she had the worst like dirty 90s jokes like she was like a a dead man's version of andrew dice clay and like a (laughs) and like a grandma's body (laughs) maybe not your taste but how did the audience take it i thought thought the audience was like eager eager to laugh and they they laughed (laughs) desperate (laughs) desperate to laugh my person in the audience said it was nervous laughter that's how she described it my person in the audience (laughs) Oh, go on. You, I, I, sh- I should have asked you about this. So what did your friend in the audience, how did they report the show? What did she think? Well, as in regards to the stand-up comedian, she sort of <clears throat> spoke similarly that, yeah, it was a little bit like 90s and, and geared towards single women of a certain age bracket, but that 80 plus. was clever. No, I think it's like older divorcee, middle-aged. Mm, Kathy. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's actually somebody said it. Or not Kat. Yeah, well, you were there. You were there. I might have been the one who said that. Yeah, come on. I, I'm 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 looking for more Beetle Bailey in my Beetle stand Bailey. up. Um, Wizard of Eid. So, um, and she said we were the funniest. Obviously. So um, we like her. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> she's a she's a tough nut to crack. You know, I think she enjoyed it. Well, that's good. But yeah. I mean, we had an amazing show. Again, I will also reiterate it was. I mean, we got some big fucking laughs in some of those games, mm-hmm. like particularly like uh, Fortune Teller. Man, that was that was amazing. Oh yeah. Um, when I fell off the chairs, drum. <laughs> that was yeah. really good too. You're great with the physical comedy, Zazie. Anything for a laugh, Morgan. That's yeah. what I, did. <laughs> I actually. Truth be told. That's how she lost her virginity. <laughs> I, know, I can give you an impression of me losing my virginity. It was, I don't know if we should do this. Didn't my, ask for that. Is my dad didn't coming? What? what? <laughs> and then it was over. Wait, wait. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Is my that dad again? coming? <laughs> is my dad coming? Oh. No. Oh. No. That's what you said. That is what you said. I was said. on the couch at my parents' birthday on my graduation night. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. On my parents' birthday at my parents' basement. Your parents' graduation (laughs) from parenting school. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) side note. uh, Wait, where was I going with this? Oh, but in first grade, every kid got... (laughs) (laughs) How 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 early was your... Every kid in first grade got a superlative, like best handwriting, best, like, Mm -hmm. something. I was little Miss Joke Teller. Mm -hmm. (laughs) First grade. Whatever. 
Uh, what does this have to do with <laughs> this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that a separate story? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was in response to story, Zazie. Yeah. Anything for a laugh. More no, oh, oh, yeah. I don't remember. You, and then somebody said, "Much like losing your virginity." Yeah. And we're back. Okay, <laughs> so um, come check us out. Any idea when our next um, the first Highwood is going to be? December Well, as soon as we decide to pay fifty dollars for it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, yeah, we'll <laughs> talk about this. Okay, so like, what is the um, the Highwood Theater? They have this thing where you can pay fifty dollars, uh-huh. and you're the featured premium act, which entitles you to one and a half hours of time of free practice space. Unacceptable. Two doesn't comp matter. tickets. That doesn't also matter. Reserved guest seating. I mean, you could sit anywhere. <laughs> it's, like, it's not like all the seats are the same. Like you, and, um, you get one of those metal chairs with the with the uh, with the cushions instead of like a folding chair. Yeah. And uh, they shoot a video for you, which we already do. Right. It's <laughs> not of the performance. They just do a video yeah. for you. DP. A DP video. A DP video of. <laughs> And, Downright uh, Franks. <laughs> yeah, and they advertise you on their website as their featured, D featured act. Yes, <laughs> that's. Uh, I mean, I am of the mind that we don't need to pay the fifty dollars because, as like, we didn't pay the fifty dollars for the last show, and we got, we still got the most time, and we were last. But we had to practice in the hallway. I mean, that, we don't, that doesn't matter. <laughs> That's not worth 50 bucks. Yeah, we could improvise wherever we're practicing. Yeah, we don't need, like, I wonder if that practice space helped dad joke at all. Um, We can ask them. Well, (laughs) that that one guy was in the group that performed. I just got a, uh, a, like, funding request from Highwood in the mail. I don't even know how they got my address. Wow. Whoa. I guess I bought somebody else's ticket once. It's that digital imprint. Actually, yeah, then again, it's because I did buy a ticket to meet you guys there. So. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The first time yeah. we met somebody. They get money from their audience. They get money from their acts. Mm-hmm. They get money from the, the local states. government. Yeah. They get money from the students. But they don't give their acts any money. <laughs> Except for exposure. Yeah. Those high school students are robbing us blind. <laughs> Oh, those uh, bastards. All righty. Well, they... But David does love exposing himself. <laughs> and we're back! <laughs> and it's weird how I got connected with the Highwood because it was when I was with the Laugh Index Theater. And um, one of my coaches, who is like a real crude uh, frat boy, not that much younger than me, Real John Belushi type. Right. You're, yeah. just, you're just out of college. He, w- he was basically what Matt is doing there now. He was doing that. And I'm like, I have a hard time. I guess that's why he's not there now. I have a hard time imagining like him in that, you know, in that type of setting. Do you think you'd be interested in my 47th virginity? <laughs> Your 47th virginity? How, what? um... We, uh, Matt looks like he's in his 30s. No. no. <laughs> he's well, younger than that. I, he's been, his time at the Highwood Theater since he's we aging. started there, he, he's looked aged. It's like when a, when you see Obama when you first started as a president and now. Yeah. Now he's probably <laughs> now 22, 23. Because I, I, I think know. everyone there that performs seems to be like high school. I have a like. And we're back! <laughs> That's it. Okay, so we got who messaged us on Facebook and was like, "I want to bring my group to your next Highwood show." Did you see uh, that message, Gloria? Yeah, because apparently she was in the audience of the last Highwood show. Nice. And she was like, "I want to." She messaged us on Facebook and was like, "I want to bring my group to your next Highwood show." What about to see it? Yeah. Oh, oh she wait a wants to. Sh- oh, I'm someone different. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's we're just di- getting bombarded yeah. by. People. I thought you were talking about Gloria. That so was good. at the pinch. Yes. Gloria Steinem. Yes. I right. want you guys to see what a real improv <laughs> true. Right. I don't is remember. Like, yeah, I don't remember who was she. Th- who was she there with at the highway? I have no idea. I the, apparently she was in the audience. Yeah, it was a weird. Like, there's also that group of like. Maybe four it was the six. old lady's granddaughter. It was like a group of like four to six older like African Americans. I think they come there just for us. Cause I this, bet you this they is do. The, that's the third time I've saw the guy afterwards, and he must be uh, like French African because he was just like, "You guys once again did a fantastic job." <laughs> oh. 
I think that's the third time I've seen him. Like since we've been there, I'm it's like, like he's is right he here? <laughs> is, he, is he coming just? Are they coming just for us? Because it seemed like there was no yeah. one else that they were really. They're part they're of our 133 like, likes. We're like the Tyler Perry of improv. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, okay, so uh, featured segment time. Uh, uh, check us out first Tuesday of every month, at least for the next Next month. At least for December. At least for the next one month. The first every Tuesday month. of every <laughs> December. <laughs> In 2017. Not to um, worry about things that I shouldn't give an F about. <laughs> I don't have access to the Facebook page. Like, what? at what level are you admin level? You have to be with the group for at least three years. Three years, yeah, yeah. That's BS. We can just give it to you. I was about to say, how many of those likes are mine? <laughs> Probably many. Well, uh, Jeremy has the password. We'll give it to her. I, I, one of us probably has the power to admin people. Yeah. What is the password? No, nah, I don't know. Mm. Six sixty nine, butt face. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, yeah. Check us out at the Pinch and Highwood Theater coming soon. Check out Twitter and Facebook. Uh, that's where and we many other. Showing, we've so. got many other invitations yeah. that we keep. Remind yeah. Me. If you're in oh China, God. check us out on Weibo. I think you still, still have the uh, <laughs> once again for the fourth year in a row the Steel Stack Comedy Improv Festival in Pennsylvania. Uh, Gotta keep wondering us to do it. No one wants to go. Remind me one more time. We just don't want to travel to Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from there. It's not worth it. Will you stay at your... Uh, if, my aunt's place? Yeah. Unless you like chicken corn soup. I guess mm. it's not. What's chicken corn soup? Well, it's the soup, you see, that has chicken and corn in it. What? <laughs> you can't put those two things together. I'm glad you said that, Dave, because you can now huh. in soup form. Don't chickens eat corn? That's like their Wait a minute. Should it be chicken corn chowder? There, That does also exist. That's a different thing? That's so a different thing. this is thing. a clear broth? It is, yeah. Chicken corn soup is like a clear broth, and um, chicken uh, corn chowder is like a thick a I thought noodles thing. really trademark the chicken clear soup. <laughs> so that whole soup, that sounds unkosher, because you're not allowed to mix milk and meat because it's life and death. I don't think you should be able to mix corn and chicken. <laughs> because it's the same thing. That's what milk no, and meat represent? No, that would be represent? eggs and chicken. Oh. Uh, well, not really. Do, but what came first? The chicken or the corn? <laughs> what do, came first? The children or the corn? I guess <laughs> birds don't lactate in any way. Well, there's I've only milked one way to a bird. Find it. Yeah. I've milked, milked a bird, bird before, yeah. or maybe yeah. it was a frat guy in a big bird. I was, a, I was about to say how many, <laughs> how many nipples we did have because yeah. this one, we need to talk. It's never gonna make it to air. Um, also, uh, chicken. Nope, done. I forgot. I had something to contribute. Though. That's all right. Okay, feature segment time. It's time for Google Feud, one of our past favorites. Uh, the way this works is we will go to the site googlefeud.com and we will play a couple of rounds, try to break a record of guesses. Um, it, there's four different categories and we have to guess the um, uh, how Google will autocomplete certain uh, words and queries. And... It's a fun time, and we normally do really bad and expose ourselves as idiots. So, Whoa. what Whoa. will be... <laughs> is Jeremy here? <laughs> no, it's Zazie, and she's loud and proud. Is there real coffee in this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I am Jack. I know. I don't want to eat... I, I want some more, but I'm like... I'm not the Dave on the jar. This is great for audio, because... Why are you pointing at my penis, Pete, <laughs> is there coffee in here? Right. <laughs> I get it. Right. <laughs> okay, Google feud. Here we go, Dave. Podcast. Uh, what you did not hear is us failing miserably at hundreds of attempts at Google feud. Believe me, it was boring and sad. So anyway. Uh, that's been episode 32 of the Penthouse Basement Podcast. I've been here with... Dave Johnston. Pete Pinocchi. Zazie Morgan. And this is your fearless host, David Lamison. Thanks for listening and sayonara. Can we edit and cut in this comment? <laughs>
what do you think would come up next if you Googled the penthouse basement? <laughs> we can actually do that right now. Let's do it quick. Let's do wait, it should quick. we guess first? Yeah, guess. I was well, saying. wait, but let, well, let, go to Google and type in the penthouse basement. Well, then we'll already see what's. Well, you guys won't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> really? No, nothing. There's no autocomplete. So people Aww. aren't people aren't putting you in. You guys should have let us guess. For no, a people long aren't time. putting in like the penthouse basements nude or the penthouse basements aren't funny or the penthouse basements smell like Cheetos or <laughs> you know. Nobody. No one. Aww. Nobody. I'm, well, I'm gonna start googling us tonight. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. How about the penthouse basements DP? <laughs> <laughs>